But there's this quote from a couple of weeks ago uh, that Brian Kelly said, maybe it's at the end of October, might have been after the Ole Miss game, maybe it's the Florida game. Uh, but Brian Kelly said, look, October is for pretenders. November is for contenders. And he is someone who can say that with a straight face, given that what? He hasn't lost a November game since 2017, I think is a crazy stat, that is now still going and hopefully will continue through this week. Um, but when you look, this idea, right, November is for contenders, this is where every single year teams start to get weeded out. And the thing about it is you don't have to dominate every game. In fact, most great teams will not dominate every game. Uh, A great team will have a week where they just don't have it, be it, you know, whatever classic sports cliche excuse you want to lose, right? Is is, is it a look-ahead spot? Is it some odd weather? Is it one of those weird rivalries? No matter who's good or bad, it always seems to go sideways and it's always close. But a great team, no matter which of those cliches are in play, and a team that is deserving of a playoff spot will find a way to win every single week. And that's what you saw a lot of these teams do this weekend, right? TCU found a way against Baylor. Now, it took some of the best and wildest late-game execution that I've ever seen, but they found a way they survived in advance. Michigan finds their way. Against a really good Brett Bielema, Illinois team coming in that game at seven and three, supposed to get blown out. They didn't care. They had Michigan on the ropes. Michigan finds a way to get it done. On a cold day in Kentucky, Georgia doesn't have their best game. No offense to be spoken of. You know what? They handle their business. They do enough. They move on. USC out west in the biggest game of the day, the Rose Bowl, a beautiful venue. Two LA teams in a while. Since we've seen a Pac-12 game, much less a USC-USC-LA game, with this much juice in it, and USC and Lincoln Riley find a way to outlast and outscore. UCLA and the Rose Bowl Clemson beats down Miami. LSU shows great accountability, handles their business, beats UAB badly. But November is for contenders. And like I said, teams get weeded out. And unfortunately for volunteer fans, they were the unlucky loser in this case. And they have indeed been weeded out. And we're really going to stop and think about this for a second because it, it, it kind of blows my mind when you take a step back and just say, oh, yeah, Tennessee. No, like, we're, we're, we're going to think about this because Tennessee gets demolished by Spencer Rattler and Hendon Hooker tears His ACL. I mean, again, think about that. First off, uh, gutted for Hooker, obviously, right? Uh, This is the absolute worst part of the sport. um, It's just brutal. It's unfair. It's heartbreaking. It's all of these things, right? He's worked too hard. He's done too much good for himself, for his teammates, for that program, for that community to now have to suffer this right before he's trying to go to the NFL and all these sorts of things, right? So just absolutely brutal. This is the part of the game that sucks worse than anything else. But when you look at this team as a whole, I cannot help but be blown away, astounded, flabbergasted by how little and how quickly this entire year just came crumbling down for Tennessee. I mean, think about it. This is a Tennessee team that has been the toast of the college football scene for the entire year. All right, the entire season, this has been their season. This has been the story of their rise. I mean, they've played in the most-watched games on the year. First LG, or first Tennessee-Alabama was the most-watched game, then Tennessee-Georgia still is the most-watched game of the year. Obviously, they played in games like LSU, which were high. Like, so if, if you looked at a top-10 list, Tennessee's going to be all over that. And, 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 and when you always saw them on this stage, uh, they, 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 they had this – very like sexy, overwhelming offense, right? What's the old uh, uh, late '90s, kind of early 2000s old ad campaign? The MLB had chicks dig the long ball. Well, guess what? We all dig the long ball when it comes to football, and we all dug Tennessee style. So they were always playing on the big stage. They were looking great while doing so. They had a legit Heisman quarterback at candidate. They had minus 500 odds to make the playoffs, and now. 
It's not even like they have a little of that. They have none of that. They have none of it. It's all gone. 60 minutes. A blink of an eye. And all of that good, all of that build, all of that growth demolished. It's disconcerting in how quickly the end can come. And let's zoom in further. Because the worst part is, is that it all comes in the hands of a South Carolina team that if you look at the Gamecocks last three weeks previous to this game, they lost 24-10 to Mizzou and 38-6 to to a Florida team that just got their ass kicked by Vanderbilt on Saturday. What? It's insanity. Tennessee, we're 22-point favorites. Vegas always knows, right? We say it all the time. No, we just always eliminate the times that Vegas is wrong and the times where we have these bad beats where we barely win or it's close. We're like, oh, yeah, they always are. And then they look, they're great. I get it. I get it. But you never really know what's going to happen. And this is yet, as we enter playoff season, and we talk more and more about it, and you're going to see people fading TCU or fading this team or that team for, oh, they barely won this game. They barely won that game. Yet another example of why resume and actually winning the games you play matters more than anything. More than anything. Because you can tell me who you think is better, but you never really know what's going to happen on game day. How many would have, how, how many of you would have picked South Carolina to win this game? Much less. South Carolina throw up over 60 points. And for Spencer Rattler to throw six touchdowns. I mean, really think about this, guys. Spencer Rattler coming into this game on the season had eight touchdowns to nine picks, boys, on the year. And I know this is a slippery slope to play here, but if you take away the Vanderbilt game in which he threw three touchdowns and no picks, he had five touchdowns to eight picks on the year. He threw zero touchdowns against Charlotte. And now he just threw six Saturday night against the number five team in the country. Nearly matching his season total. I mean, it's absurd. It's absurd. And nobody in their right mind ever would have expected or ever would have predicted that. I mean, you play this game 10 more times, Tennessee probably wins nine of them. Unfortunately for Tennessee fans, they happen to live in the reality where the worst possible outcome took place. So the point of all of this, you're like, why are you talking so much about Tennessee? No, no, no. The point of all of this is never take winning for granted. Be wary of looking ahead. Live in the moment and enjoy the journey because you never know when it will come to an end and you never quite realize how quickly it can all come to an end. It can all crumble down, right? Hey, you know what? Not a bad message for this LSU team as they prepare to take on a Texas A&M team that looks dead in the water. But if you want to ruin all the good vibes that you've built up over year one here uh, with Brian Kelly with this LSU team, go lose to Texas A&M. See how people feel about that. Similar situation, right? Team that's been struggling. You're on the road in their stadium. We'll see? Never take winning for granted. And enjoy the journey. And actually, with that in mind, speaking of enjoying the journey, enjoying the actual football, to bring back to LSU, uh, shout out to all the real ones that made it to Tiger Stadium on Saturday night. And I do not mean that as any criticism or for, for that stadium being, you know, what, what, what it was. I wouldn't go to the game. Like, I completely understand why people stayed home from that game. Miserable, miserable environment. But... I do know that it meant a lot to the seniors, to the players out there who have given their time and life and effort and blood to this program. Every single person in those stands Saturday night for that last game in Tiger Stadium for this team, that meant a lot to those seniors. Saw a lot of y'all at Don Juan after halftime. Hat tip to y'all. Hat tip to everybody who went. Hat tip to everybody who stayed or didn't. It doesn't really matter. Just shout out to those who are enjoying the journey. Enjoying seeing the solid football. And you were rewarded for it because LSU looked great on Saturday. And I know it's UAB, right? But look, what was the spread? 14 and a half? Okay. Wasn't even that close. They, they looked like the, we. I, I kind of said it going into the game, like if you're the sixth best team in the country, which the rankings say you are, uh, you should handle that team. This late in the season, November is for contenders. And if you're a contender, that's a game that you handle, right? That's not playing South Carolina. The UAB is not playing a 7-3 and Illinois team like Michigan had to deal with. It's not playing a 
six and four Baylor team led by Dave Aranda that's been up and down, but you know, still has the ability to really punch up. No, no, this was a game you needed to handle. And if you watch Brian Kelly's post game, the word that he kept going back to was accountability. And I think that's very appropriate, right? Being accountable to yourself, to the work you've put in, being accountable to the brother, your brother, and the work they've been put in, and being accountable to what you've put on tape the entire year. And I thought it was a very mature win from this LSU team, and it was the exact type of win that they needed both offensively and defensively to um, maybe wash out some of the taste from the Arkansas trap and kind of refocus going into Texas A&M for this Thanksgiving week. So, a wild, underdog-filled day of college football on Saturday, but not for your LSU Tigers. A great performance, um, all in all.